So with question number 7, now we will be entering into section 2 and let me give you the brief idea about that. In section 2, there are more than one options which may be correct. So you need to be very precise and strong amount of attention is required. The seventh question is from modern physics and the concept of Bohr's model has been used. If you have gone through the question, you could see there is a potential energy which is equal to F times R. Not to confuse this F with force, it is a positive constant. And based on this, you know, involving Bohr's model, we need to comment on the dependence of radius and speed with N, that is about option number A and B and C D demands the value of energy. Let us begin almost a straightforward patterned question this is. Now how much is the potential energy? The value of potential energy is given to be F multiplied by R and we know the relationship the force now since F has already been used let me write F C that will be the central force to write and that is equal to minus of dv by dr that is the expression. Now let us see of course the direction would be r cap that is the radial direction. How much will be the force? The derivative of this that is going to be minus of r is not it? So fc is equal to minus of f multiplied by r cap. Negative r cap indicates that the force is directed towards the center and you know this is must in order to have a circular motion because we need a centripetal force. So with this statement we also come up with the next step and that next step is the magnitude of force is equal to mv square by r and let us call this as equation number 1 and the second equation if I want to generate that is going to be nh by 2 pi will be equals to mvr and that is equation number 2. There you go. A little bit of calculation is required, not much and if you see the expression will be satisfying option number b, the dependence of radius and speed with n. Now to choose the option between c and d, we need to calculate the energy and that also now will not be a trouble because the total mechanical energy is going to be one half mv square which is the kinetic plus the potential energy is already given. Now put these values and you would get option number C as the value of energy. So with regard to question number 7, the correct options stand to be B and C. Let us go to the 8th one. Now question number 8 that is brought from the topic of radiation and if you go through the option that initially may scare you because every possible concepts of radiation have been merged into this question and a little bit of calculation is required. Now let us see what does it say. You know there is a filament light bulb having surface area this much so this time what I will do is that I will pick up the variables. The surface area is given so let me call that as A. Okay, later on we may put the value which is 64 millimeter square, be careful with the unit and it is taken as a black body and its temperature T also has been given which is 2500 Kelvin and when it is observed from a point which is distant of course that can be taken as a point object which this statement also endorses. Now during night the bulb is observed from a distance of 100 meter so let me call that by small r the distance between point of observation and the bulb okay and there the next point the pupil of the eye you know that is the observing point is taken to be circular with the radius this much so radius of pupil r p let me take this. So I have extracted what are the variables given and the Stefan Boltzmann's value that is given, Wind's displacement is given, Planck's constant is given. So these are all the standard value. Now first thing that we require is the power radiated by the filament 
we need to calculate how much is the power radiated. And we get this, you know, the expression of power radiated by a black body is going to be sigma a t raised to the power 4 because the emissivity will be taken as 1. And when you do this, the option will come 141.75 watt. So, here you could see option number A does not match. As I have already given the disclaimer, little amount of calculation is involved, but it is not very hectic. Now, what does it say? Radiated power entering into one eye of the observer is this much. So, this you need to understand the source generates the power, but that entire power is not going to enter into the pupil because the point source will radiate energy, you know, in all possible direction, the isotropic source will take into account. So, how come we calculate that? Well, it is also a very common practice that we do. The point source P divided by 4 pi r square, r is the distance between the eye and the bulb. So, this is going to be intensity at that point where the pupil lies. And because, you know, the pupil size is so small, so this can be fairly assumed to be taken as constant there. And that intensity multiplied by pi r e square is going to give me the power that will enter into the pupil. You know, a very close relation in terms of calculation how we do about solar constant and the power received by earth. So, you can see the question is something in that particular line. And when you do that calculation, you are going to get it as 2.9 into 10 raised to the power minus of 9 watt. So, of course, option number B would be incorrect. Now, let us go for option number C, the wavelength corresponding to maximum intensity. So, now see the Wien's displacement law has to be invoked and what does Wien's displacement law says? Of course, let me write it here that comes out to be lambda m multiplied by t is the Wien's constant. Let me represent by b the value is given there and when you do this, you would be getting 1160 nanometer as the wavelength. So, option number C is the correct one. Now, the D part is another very beautiful connection. Now, you could see the average wavelength of emitted radiation has been given and we need to calculate the total number of photons that will enter per second into one eye of the observer. So, this is another beautiful correlation that can be made. So, first of all, what we will do is that how much power is, you know, entering the eye. If you see, that is the situation 2.9 into 10 raised to the power minus 9, okay. So, 2.9 into 10 raised to the power minus 9 is the power entering into the pupil and that will be equals to small n h c by lambda, where small n is the desired thing, the number of photons entering per unit time. Now, lambda is also given, you calculate that value and small n comes out to be 2.53 into 10 raised to the power 10, that would be the value and you could see option number D does not match with that. So, for this question, question number 8, we saw that the correct option is option number C, that will be the correct one, interesting one. Now, let us go to the ninth question. The ninth question that is from units and measurement and dimension has appeared and this is almost an open secret that you can expect at least one question from this topic. And it is always the, you know, innovative idea of JE Advance that they give questions related to dimension, but with always some new innovation is applied there and this question is a nice testimony of that. You could see what this statement says is that sometimes it becomes convenient that we represent the dimensions of physical quantities in terms of one quantity. So, here that one quantity is taken as x 
and position, speed, acceleration, momentum and force are given in this manner. Now based on this, we got to relate alpha, p, beta, p, q, r. You could see, if you see first option is a relation between alpha, p and beta. The second and fourth is to relate p, q, r and beta and third is to relate p, q, r and alpha. Okay, so that's what we need to do. Let's start, let's get going. The first thing see, position is given, speed is given, so I can write the dimension of time, that is of course position by speed, so x raised to the power alpha minus of beta. This is a straightforward one. Time writing as position divided by speed, okay? And let's call this as equation number one. So now to go further to relate p, q, r, beta and alpha, what I'll do is that I will relate acceleration with speed. And you could see here the value of acceleration which is x raised to the power p, that's the dimension of acceleration, will be speed which is x raised to the power beta by time which is x raised to the power alpha minus beta. So that is another computation that we may suggest. And now we need to equate the power again. So this is going to be p equals to, let's see how much will I get? I will be getting twice of beta minus of alpha. And the first breakthrough has been achieved here, alpha plus p equals to twice of beta. Now further let's try to see how can we relate I can go with the idea that force is linear momentum by time. That's how we can go. So how much is the force here? X raised to the power r, okay? So going further, x raised to the power r, that's a force, and momentum, which is x raised to the power q, and time, that's of course, x raised to the power alpha minus of beta. So there you go. Now you can easily relate with the help of equation 2 and equation 3. What does equation 3 say? Just to relate it, r equals to q minus of alpha plus of beta. So that's how you get it. And you do all those calculations, now it's quite simple, see? Because if you want to relate p, q, r and beta from these two equations, you need to eliminate alpha. And if you want to relate p, q, r and you know alpha you need to eliminate beta so this is quite a straightforward one you do that you will get option number a and option number b to be correct let's go to the next question 